Are good sight readers born or created? In other words, are some people naturally good at sight reading? Or is sight reading a skill that anyone can acquire? You may believe that good sight readers are born, not created. And I understand why you might think that. Because all we see is the result. We see the people sight reading in front of us. We don't actually see what goes on behind closed doors in the practice room. We have no idea how long they've been practicing sight reading, how many pieces they practice. All we see is the result. So it's easy enough to think that some people are just naturally good at sight reading. But let me ask you this, were you born a good driver? Did you get into the driver's seat and did you know exactly what to do? Or did you have to sign up for driving lessons and learn? Were you born knowing how to swim or did you learn? Well, sight reading is like driving or swimming. It's something that you learn and can improve. David Halter, who is a piano teacher from the US, he is a perfect example of someone who was not good at sight reading, but became good later on. In fact, as you'll hear, he played mostly by ear and he avoided any situation where he had to sight read. And maybe this is something you can relate to. But now he is good at sight reading. So you may be wondering, well, how did he become good at sight reading? What changed? So let's hear his story. I just want to have a bit more understanding of your story before we go into more sure. of the nitty gritty. Uh, sure. So what was your experience like with piano lessons? Uh, and was sight reading part of your lessons? Like, what was it like for you? <clears throat> so, uh, I learned primarily by ear because I started out with the violin in the Suzuki method uh, and we were encouraged to develop the ear and which is wonderful, of course. Uh, and so I would go to sleep at night with the Suzuki violin cassette playing on repeat. It was some special cassette that would it would repeat all night long uh, playing the same pieces over and over and over again. And the idea is that I'm kind of absorbing them while I slept. <laughs> I mean, I, I wish it worked better, but I'm not so sure if that works. But the idea is that by listening to music a lot uh, and going to concerts, you, you learn the language, which is, I think, excellent uh, for young people. Um, but the problem was that when I started playing the piano, uh, sight reading suddenly became much more difficult, you know, because there were two different clefs and I just wanted to figure things out by ear um, and, and bang around, like I was saying, and just make things up. So I spent most of my practice time uh, writing my own pieces, improvising, and I would, I would have to basically, I would kind of, you know, watch the teacher play the pieces and, and learn them pretty as quick as I could, or get my dad who also plays, get my dad to play it. Um, my, I had wonderful teachers, growing up, I was really lucky to have good teachers, but I, and they encouraged me to practice sight reading, but I avoided it because I did not like it. And I, therefore I didn't get any better. So I still didn't like it. And I would avoid situations that required uh, sight reading, <laughs> right? So I, I, I avoided hanging out with musician friends. If I thought they might want to sight read stuff, I would ask for the music well in advance. And um, I remember I was, uh, I was about, I was a teenager and I was, I just played a Gypsy Rondo Haydn trio with, with a couple friends, which is a really fast, you know, high energy piece by Haydn. Uh, we had played it at church and everybody at church was, was impressed. They thought, wow, he, you know, he can really play that, that, those keys. And so a lady came up to me after the service and she said, we're having our Christmas party our Christmas luncheon next week and you can obviously play really well so we'd love for you to just come and play some Christmas carols you know no big deal just 30 minutes of Christmas carols and I said yes but I was inwardly totally freaked out 
and <laughs> and I sped I went home and got out the the hymnal and started learning these pieces as fast as I possibly could because I only had one week um, that Haydn had taken me months to figure out and learn but I could play it you know uh, and I ended up spending about 20 hours probably learning 30 minutes of music uh, so luckily I had all day every day that week to practice being on uh, Christmas break and so I went to the church and I you know kind of proudly sat down to the piano and played my 30 minutes of music and everybody loved it and they all seemed to be having a good time like I would you know the feeling when you're when you're playing at a, at a gathering it's great because you're kind of the life of the party but you're not the center of attention you're just infusing the energy uh you know so everyone was singing along and just having a good time but they didn't know that i wasn't actually reading the music i just had it there you know to kind of remind me what to do but i was mostly playing from memory hmm. um and then i got up to leave after i was done playing and the same lady came over to me again and said uh that was great thank you so much but you actually haven't played my favorite carol uh and we'd all love for you to play silent night uh which you know is probably one of the easiest carols uh and she said okay everybody um you know, calm down, quiet down. David's gonna have a little grand finale. We're all gonna sing Silent Night together. David's gonna play it, you know? And I kind of quickly tried to figure it out by ear, but I was so nervous that I, I just, I couldn't. And she said, oh, don't worry about it. It's right here in the hymnal. It's, and she, she turned, she had to memorize what page it was on. So she turned to the Silent Night, you know, and, uh, and I just couldn't, it was, I was just, I was just, it was nothing. I couldn't do it. Uh, and everybody was ready to sing. And then they just, they were really confused. Like they had seen me looking at the hymnal for the past half hour. And now I couldn't play the easiest carol in the book. And so I just kind of said, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I don't sight read well. And I was so embarrassed. Uh, oh. And so then, um, so then when I was in, the, in a master's degree, so I did composition for undergrad at Middlebury College um, because I couldn't read well and I was having a problem with my, my hand also. Uh, so I composed. Uh, then after that, I did a master's degree with Barbara Lister Sink uh, at Salem College in Winston-Salem here. And uh, she had a sight reading class where she had people put a barber's bib. So, they, she, so she put it like a barber's bib that you would cover yourself with to get a haircut around your neck and then drape it over the keys. So you can't, even if you look down, you can't see anything. Uh, and that, and I, I did even worse with that thing on, I couldn't even begin to play. But that's when I realized that's exactly the skill that I need to work on. So the skill that you're talking about, Manu, and, and having a whole month worth, worth on, which is fantastic. Uh, everybody that comes across you is lucky because you're pointing it out. You're saying, this is the, this is the important, or one of the important things to develop, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and that's exactly what Dr. Lister Sink did for me. So for the next couple of years, I really, really worked on that, and now I'm able to sight read decently well. Uh, so it transformed everything. I mean, I I knew all my theory. I studied atonal theory in 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 college, and knew all my scales and arpeggios. I just wasn't used to sight reading without looking down. I would constantly look up and down at the music, so I never got very good at it. So that's my background, basically. <laughs> Were you able to relate to David's story? Do you also find yourself avoiding situations where you have to sight read? Do you tend to learn pieces by ear? Do you ask for the music way in advance in order to prepare it? Whether or not you can relate to David's story, what I would like you to remember from this video is that good sight readers are created, which means that you too can become a good sight reader. In David's case, he had sight reading lessons and he practiced with a barber's bib and he became better at sight reading. But this is not to say that you have to go out there and wear a barber's bib 
whenever you're practicing sight reading. The point is that you change your actions to get different results. And it's about believing that good sight readers are created. Because if you hold on to the belief that good sight readers are born, not created, then what this will do is just keep you stuck where you are. Because you will use this belief as an excuse to not get better. You will just tell yourself, oh, well, I'm not good at sight reading, so that's that. And you won't do anything about it. So do you really want to keep thinking that good sight readers are born and stay stuck where you are? Or are you going to do whatever it takes to become the sight reader you've always wanted to become? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Happy sight reading!